Good afternoon, guys. It's working, bringing you a quick update on Bitcoin. Hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. We're looking at Bitcoin and the U.S. dollar. This is the four-hour chart on Coinbase. I'm going to try to make this quick, guys. Last time we spoke, Bitcoin was trading right up here at about uh, 80, 86.50 ish, I believe. I told you it looked like that the uh, it looked like some steam was starting to come out of the bulls here, guys. It looked like they were getting a little bit a uh, little bit exhausted, and we're expecting a pullback. And I told you guys to look for a bounce right around 8400. Price did end up breaking down. Didn't quite get to 8400. Got to about 80. What was the low here? 84.26, about $26 shy of our target there, and we got a little bit of a bounce. Now that bounce was fairly lackluster, did not happen on much volume, and was not very, um, uh, was not a very strong bounce at all, guys. I was hoping for much more, um, um, but we really didn't test this support here. So I'm looking for another breakdown again, possibly down to about 84 to 83.50 ish, maybe even as low as uh, as uh, 81.50. That's certainly possible, and if eighty and you know if we break down here and uh, go as low as eighty one fifty, I'm not, it's not going to bother me too much until we do break eighty one fifty. If we break eighty one fifty, I think things could get bearish really very quickly, guys. I think we could come down to at least seventy five hundred, if not seventy two hundred. If seventy two hundred does break, guys, I think we're very likely coming down for that thirty five to forty five percent correction, and we could find ourselves around six thousand to sixty five hundred very quickly. In the short term, guys, though, looking at this, guys, it looks to me like we're uh, like like they're like price is creating a decent broadening wedge um, again on the smaller time frames here if that is in fact the case the descending broadening wedge more often than not breaks to the upside it, it is a bullish pattern um, and if it does break up guys again I'm looking for a target somewhere around 95 to 9600 could it be shy of that yeah there's no question about it, and especially if price breaks up and you see short positions starting to stack, you can bet that there's there's going to be a lot of people that try to front run this, guys, and try to get in their shorts early, looking for, again, a bounce around 90, uh, or rejection around 95 to 9,600. And again, that's if it breaks up. Looking at, zooming out here on the daily chart, guys, we've got to take out 8,900, this prior high. I showed you guys um, on my last video why I'm watching that $8,900 zone uh, so closely. If we pull our FIB extension, guys, you can see that right at about 8900 that this is the zone this is this this is the uh, the 618 right between the 618 and the 65 that golden pocket is right around that $8900 range you can see it's rejecting just perfectly off of that zone right now as i pointed out in the last two updates there guys so if we do have a daily candle closing above 8900 i do think or excuse me opening and closing so a decisive break above 8900 again a daily candle opening and closing above 8900 i do think that's going to be your sign that we're coming up to that uh, 95 to $9600 range that being said, guys, I would expect a, uh, a a fairly decent rejection off that zone. Again, zooming out here on the daily chart, it does look to me like we're starting to build a rising wedge. A rising wedge, that is a bearish pattern, guys. Now, often, even though this does break to the downside more often than not, um, we sometimes get what's called a throwover. So we get something like this, especially when it's ending on a parabolic move, and there's no question we'd be ending on a, a, an extremely bullish parabolic move here. Um, oftentimes, when you see something like this, guys, you get what's kind of called a throwover. So price could come back down here, get that little springboard right off that zone, break to the upside here, hit that area of resistance, and then have a very strong breakdown. Um, if this does play out, guys, again, I'm going to be looking the I don't think 8,400 would hold if this does play out, guys. I would be looking for possibly a bounce right here between about... Uh 7550 and 7500 um, as I told you guys before that was the kind of the area where resistance turned into support turned into resistance turned back into support that is a key area I would expect a decent a, a, I don't even want to say decent I would expect a little bounce off that if you're if you're scalping if this does play out if you're scalping I certainly would expect a bounce around 7500 ish but I wouldn't expect it to hold I would say more than likely we're going to come back down to at least 3200 which would be the top of the uh, um, um, area of resistance right here. That would be the body of the candle here. What was resistance turned into support right here. Again, that's going to be right around 7,200. That's the first area that I can see maybe holding, and that would be the target. If this is, in fact, a rising wedge and this gets confirmed, that would be the target of that rising wedge, right around 8,200-ish. Or excuse me, 7,200, right around 7,200. So that would be the first area that I would expect to hold. That would be the first area that I would... Uh, um, start to uh, maybe consider going in long here again a, a nice little re-entry right around 7200 um, but if 7200 does break down guys I think more than likely we're going to be coming back down to about 60 anywhere between 6000 and 6500 if we look in the past here guys 6500 that was a decent area of resistance in the past it's also support I would expect it to act as support on the way back down if we do get that larger correction and if 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 it does end up correcting from that 9600 
that would be about a let's call it a, let's call it 90 let's uh, yeah, about 96.50 let's call it so if it corrects down from 96.50 if we come back down to about 65 uh, 6500 ish that would be about a 33 percent correction and what do we say we're looking for looking for about a 35 to 45 percent correction so yeah that's certainly on the table certainly a possibility do we have to get a 35 to 45 percent correction no absolutely not but it's very, very, in my opinion, it is probable. Um, I mean, anytime we've had this parabolic move like this, it's always been followed by a 35 to 45% correction. Um, it's just a matter of where the top is going to be for that. All right, looking at our indicators, still showing bearish divergence um, on the, oh, let me go back out to the daily, still showing bearish divergence on both the MACD and the RSI on the daily. If we come in here to the four hour, uh, let's see, four hour not really showing us much, at least not on the RSI. We're actually getting a little bit of a uh, little bit of hidden, uh, hidden bullish divergence, believe it or not, right here on the four hour MACD. So price created a higher low. And uh, looking at the histogram here on the four hour histogram created a lower low. Um, this obviously being an uptrend, looking at the bottom there, that's hidden divergence. And in this case, that's hidden bullish divergence. And that's kind of why we saw that or not why, but that would that was an indication if you're trading here of a little bounce here right around that uh, $8,400 range. That being said, we got almost no follow through as of yet. And I'm still I, it looks to me like it wants to break back down and retest that $8,400 zone. Right, looking at our moving averages, guys, we can see when price broke down, hit perfectly right there off the eight-day EMA. Um, eight-day EMA acting as support for now. We'll have to wait and see kind of how this plays out, guys. If it does break below that eight-day EMA, guys, um, again, if we get a decisive break below that eight-day EMA, guys, I'd be watching for a fall, as I said, guys, to about approximately um, um, at least 7,500, at least 7,500 if that does end up breaking down. Looking at the four-hour, that, actually, that's interesting. Looking at the four hour, four hour Bollinger Bands are, wow. I mean, they are, I rarely see them that tight, guys. Four hour Bollinger Bands are screaming for a larger move to come. Now, we're usually when you see the Bollinger Bands like this tight, like this, guys, usually you're seeing the uh, uh, moving averages and exponential moving averages right on top of one another. Or right on, yeah, literally right on top of one another. That's oftentimes what you see when you get Bollinger Bands. That's something like we saw back here. We're not really seeing that here, guys, which is kind of strange. Um, but still, nonetheless, it is calling for a larger for a, for a larger move. And we'll have to wait and see if that kind of comes to fruition here. But uh, but yeah, uh, the Bollinger Band, that's interesting. They're almost playing chicken with each other. Coming out on the weekly, guys, we discussed this yesterday. We've got the 21-week uh, EMA crossing above the 55-week EMA, which is above the 50-week moving average. All bullish, guys. There's nothing bearish about this, guys. Extremely bullish setup of the 8 on top of the 21 on top of the 55, guys. Nothing but bullish there. Let's go ahead and check longs and shorts. Longs actually are falling off the board here. Um, yeah. Yeah. Longs are starting to fall off the board. That's actually that's actually a bullish sign. That would end that to me that that yeah to me that's bullish. To me that would indicate uh, you know possibly as I said one more kick to the upside possibly testing that ninety uh, ninety five to ninety six hundred dollar range. Let's check shorts. Shorts are kind of stable. So uh, so yeah if shorts start to stack here guys and that's a big if but if shorts start to stack here and longs continue to fall off the board guys I more than likely you're going to see that larger break to the upside and testing that ninety five to ninety six hundred dollar range. Now we're not there yet but that certainly looks like what it's setting up for. Zooming all the way out on the weekly chart here, guys. This is in log scale. Um, I know I've shown you guys this a few videos ago, guys, but this is, a, in my opinion, this is a fairly significant trend line here. This course goes all the way back to uh, uh, June of 2015. Actually, it could, some people are drawing it even farther than that back in 2012. I don't think it lines up very well, but overall, you get the picture, guys. This has been a very relevant trend line, ascending support line um, through all throughout the um, uh, bull market, all throughout basically 2015, all the way until price finally crashed below 6,000 and went down to that uh, 31, uh, 31 $50 range. Um, price is, why is it relevant? It's relevant because what was support often acts as resistance and it has acted as resistance on the way up here. And we have yet to get a decisive break zooming in here, guys. But if we do get that kick up to that $95, $9,600 range, I do think that's going to be more of that, uh, not, I don't want to call it decisive, I guess it would be a decisive break actually if kind of zooming there on the daily chart, it would be. Um, but that would solidify that breakout, guys. That would solidify this, what was, what is acting as resistance finally breaking through and even if we get that larger 35 to 45 percent correction to the downside guys my opinion this softens up resistance and this just paves the way for that larger kick up once we once that uh, once that correction does finish 
So how am I playing this, guys? I'm basically, I'm, I'm out for the most part, guys. I'm, uh, I'm out of most of my position. Actually, I still think I got a small scalp that I, uh, that I bought on this. Uh, I kind of front run that 8400 just a little bit, um, but I, I'm more than likely going to close that out, guys. I'm, I'm basically sidelined for now, waiting to see how this plays out. If we do drop back down into this zone, guys, I'm likely a buyer around 8350, hoping for a very small scalp trade, guys, but I'm not going to put a lot of faith in that. As I said, knowing if uh, 81, uh, 8150 does break down, things could get bearish very, very quickly. To the upside, if we do take out 8900 decisively, if decisively, I mean a daily candle opening and closing above 8900, even if we get a daily candle closing above 8900, it's going to seriously get my attention, guys. And at that point, guys, may be worth, um, uh, may be worth getting in a quick uh, um, swing trade targeting about 90, 95 to 96 hundred dollar range. Just be very careful because it does look to me like this is kind of starting to fizzle out, guys. It does look to me like we're starting to possibly uh, top out here and could get that larger correction. When am I going to? Uh, um, when, when, what's going to invalidate that larger correction if we get a decisive break above 10,000. If we get a daily candle opening and closing above 10,000, that will invalidate this and I'll have to reassess, guys. At that point, I think we could be coming much higher. But uh, again, it does look to me like we're going to be looking for, even if we have one more kick up here, it does look to me like this is looking for a larger correction here in the next, uh, at least in the next couple weeks. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap things there, guys. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. As always, would appreciate an upload if you have enjoyed this content. Until next time, guys, please trade safe. Take care of yourselves. This is working. Signing out.